morning dear students today we are going to learn about another cellular organelle that is golgi complex okay let's start uh, this golgi complex it is discovered by an italian cytologist whose name is camillo golgi in 1898 where he found where he isolated this golgi complex for the first time from the nerve cells of owls from the nerve cells of owls he isolated he discovered the golgi complex for the first time and um, in plants in the case of plants this golgi has another name what's that name dictyosomes so on hearing this term don't get confused it is same as golgi complex itself golgi complex in plants is called dictyosomes dictyosome not that term then regarding the occurrence usually if we consider a cell uh, the position of the uh, golgi complex is almost near to the nucleus somewhere near to the nucleus and uh, in the case of animals it is more closer to the centrosome 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 we know uh, it is somewhere here and it is more closer anyway it, it's in a sense it means that it it lies closer to the nucleus then uh, in non polarized cells so many golgi complex exist not a single one then what do you mean by this non polarized cells polarized cells are non polarized cells uh, polarized cell means like uh, some other cells all the cells have um, certain orientation like its apex always uh, located uh, uh, on the top then this side will be the lateral lateral side and this will be the base and the base is always attached with the basement membrane and from the apex usually all the secretions uh, everything is happening so uh, this is the uh, this is the condition of a polarized cell but in the case and also uh, such type of cells have uh, proper communication with another cell through cell junctions this is the case of polarized cells but in the case of non polarized cells there is no such uh, that pol uh, typical type of typical pattern of polarization there is not much communication between the adjacent cells in such type of cells so many like uh, golgi complex exist and uh, in liver cells like so it contains 50 golgi uh, golgi complex per cell so that about the occurrence then we are moving to its morphology morphology what in what form it appear it can it looks like uh, so many flattened sacs so many flattened sacs placed over the other and also it has some aggregation of some vesicles uh, this is some what its appearance so looking to the picture also you can understand its um, its appearance how it appear to, um, appear through um, appear as we observe it through some microscope it appears like in this way uh, it is a collection of flattened sacs and a cluster of vesicles cluster of vesicles and uh, some uh, areas some portions of the golgi complex have some name that name we are going to learn first is golgi cisterna golgi cisterna means uh, this portion middle almost middle portion middle portion of that flattened sacs arranged parallel to each other so flattened sacs arranged parallelly and what is the distance between uh, each sacs that is about 20 to 30 nanometer between uh, the adjacent sacs there is a distance of 20 to 30 nanometer and they are arranged concentrally concentrally means if we consider all as part of a ring all possess a common center so that is uh, that arrangement is called concentrical and arrangement if we consider all this ring as part of so many circles if we uh, try to find the center of all these circles 
all possess only a common center. So, such type of arrangement is called concentrical arrangement. And in that arrangement is convex, it has a convex side and a concave side. And based on the function wise, uh, for a Golgi complex, it possesses how many faces? Two faces are there. Which are those faces? They are a uh, cis face. Cis face is this this much area. This is face. Cis face and this face faces with the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. That cis face faces with the endoplasmic reticulum. And, a, and also uh, that face also has so many vesicles. What's the peculiarity of those vesicles? They are small, small vesicles. You can see uh, in the cis phase and a trans phase. Trans phase, uh, this bunch portion. And this portion is uh, facing towards the plasma membrane. And that phase, that portion faces towards the plasma membrane and uh, its vesicles are large sized vesicles large sized vesicles okay and this both cis phase and the trans phase they are closely connected to the cisternal compartment cis phase and trans phase both are closely connected with the cisternal compartment clear then one more thing one more uh, thing we need to understand according to the position uh, we can call it as as it is uh, near to the, the endoplasmic reticulum as, and its name is cis. This network is called the cis-Golgi network. And this portion, this network, um, uh, we can call it as trans-Golgi network. This much is trans-Golgi network. Okay, central most portion is cisterne. Okay. Next, we are going to learn about its composition. It is composed of 60% lipid and 40% protein by weight. If we uh, take its weight and of the total weight, 60% uh, is accounted by lipid and 40% uh, is of protein. And uh, this is side of the Golgi. This side of the Golgi is, uh, the, I suppose this is the Golgi and his cis side. Cis side of the Golgi always resembles the endoplasmic reticulum. This is endoplasmic reticulum. This is Golgi complex. So, it's cis side. It resembles the composition of endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, do you understand what it means? Because if we analyze the membrane composition of endoplasmic reticulum of here, it will be same as that of the uh, membrane composition of cis Golgi. And uh, likewise, the trans Golgi, its composition is same as that of the plasma membrane composition. Why it uh, happens so, I will explain later. Um, and uh, the membranes of the Golgi, it is derived from endoplasmic reticulum. Where the membranes of Golgi is deriving, it is from endoplasmic reticulum, not the point. Uh, then... The proteins and lipids um, that are entering the Golgi network, how, in what form? In the form of transport vesicle, not that term. So, from the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, that proteins and lipids, it is entering the Golgi uh, in the form of transport vesicles. And then they exit the trans Golgi. Trans Golgi means this portion. This um, tra trans Golgi uh, and join with the plasma membrane and can release its content to outside. Uh, that is one pathway. Or sometimes from the trans Golgi, that content can be transported to other cellular compartments like uh, uh, lysosomes, uh, mitochondria, like that. Okay. So, that's about uh, uh, its uh, course, the um, course of the proteins and lipids from endoplasmic reticulum to Golgi. Uh, then, 
that is again explaining here fate of proteins entering the Golgi. Uh, the, the proteins and lipids that is entering the Golgi, uh, suppose they need to undergo some modification after reaching here. And after, uh, after it get modified, then Golgi understood that this protein is to be incorporated in the endoplasmic reticular membrane. So, they need to return back to endoplasmic reticulum. Clear? So, those proteins that reach the Golgi complex for some modification, after get modified, if it is destined to be part of the endoplasmic reticulum, it will move back to the endoplasmic reticulum. Otherwise, uh, whether it belongs to uh, the extra membrane space or some other compartments, other cellular compartments of the cell, then it moves, it continues its course and uh, releases uh, releases sometimes sometimes it is incorporating to some other cell organelles or some, uh, otherwise it is releasing or secreting outside from the cell so that's about the fate uh, what would be the fate of the proteins and the lipids that is passing through the Golgi okay